Okay, so Rhaenyra Targaryen is one of the most tragic characters in the Song of Ice and Fire. Originally promised the kingdom, she was contested, and over time ended up having to fight in a civil war, just to gain back the thing that should have been hers in the first place. Rhaenyra has an incredible story attached to her, and throughout this video, we're going to be breaking down exactly what happens with her. Her fate was actually spoiled by Joffrey during Game of Thrones, but unlike him, we're going to give you a big warning before we proceed. I'm warning you, we will be spoiling it all in depth, and this will ruin the series. Without the way, are you, are you still with me? Yeah, thanks for clicking this, now let's get into Rhaenyra Targaryen. Now like I said, if you watched Game of Thrones, then you might have seen Rhaenyra's fate was actually spoiled by Joffrey. Oh fuck, here he comes, here, here he comes. Rhaenyra Targaryen was murdered by her brother, or rather, his dragon. It ate her while her son watched. <laughs> What's left of her is buried in the crypts right down there. What a stupid c Anyway, that's how it all ends, but how did we get there? Well, Rhaenyra actually started off as a very popular member of the royal family. Chapter 12 of Fire and Blood chronicles her early life, and one of the first things we hear are called is the realm's delight. Born in 97 AC to Viserys and Emma, she had two brothers, but both sadly died shortly after being born. It was in 105 AC that she took to dragon riding, and here she mounted Cyrax for the first time. The book states Rhaenyra was a very skilled rider, but this year also came with some brutal blows too. Her mother died during the birth of her baby brother Balin, and the responsibility of the throne passed over to her. In 105 AC, she was announced the heir, and several of the houses swore their allegiances to her. The position of heir was of course taken away from her uncle Daemon, who was stripped of his title due to making fun of Balin being unable to replace him. Damon really believed for a time that he was meant to rule, and that the death of Balin could even be a sign that the gods wouldn't let anything get in his way. However, Rhaenyra was chosen over him, and due to Damon thinking fondly of the girl, he didn't really protest. Damon ended up leaving the kingdom, and he travelled to Dragonstone, which is where he and Mazaria had a fling. He also took the dragon egg that was meant for baby Balin, and Viserys ended up forbidding their relationship due to him already being married to Lady Rhea. He sent envoys out to tell the two to break up, and in the show, Rhaenyra went along with them. Now after conquering the Stepstones, Daemon returned to the realm, and he handed over his newly appointed Kingdom of the Narrow Sea to broker peace with his brother. He remained in King's Landing, and it's said in the book that both Rhaenyra and Daemon would sneak out at night, and that they'd have sex in the brothels that lined the Street of Silk. They were apparently caught by Arik Kargol, and mushrooms spread a lot of rumours of what they were up to. At the tournament of Viserys' ascension, Rhaenyra had given her favour to Kristen Cole, and he was appointed as her loyal protector. She was head over heels with him, and Mushroom said that the lessons from Daemon were taught in the hopes of seducing the knight. In the book it said it was Harwin Strong who took her V-card, however the show switches it up to be Sir Kristen. The rumours about Daemon doing it appear in both the book and show though, with this being a reason that Daemon is expelled from the kingdom. Either way, Alicent ended up marrying Viserys, and when she started popping out babies, the line of succession started to become contested. Not only did Alicent have one male heir, she also had two. However, to the surprise of many, Rhaenyra was kept as the heir. Unfortunately, this would create a fracture amongst the houses, and it was at the wedding of Rhaenyra and Laenor that things started to divide. The series doesn't go into this too much, because it presents the wedding as being the place where Alicent showed she was part of the Greens. However, the book stages the divide, starting at the tournaments held in celebration of the wedding. The black dragons could be seen snapping at the greens, and there became talk of there being a party of the princess. Kristen dominated the tournaments, and he killed Sir Joffrey during this, and also broke several of Harwin's bones. Though he loved Rhaenyra, the marriage and rumours of Daemon slowly caused him to turn against Rhaenyra, and he ended up siding with Alicent, becoming her royal protector. Harwin became Rhaenyra's, and the pair started to have an affair. Together they had three sons, under the guise of being Valerians, and these were Jocerys, Lucerys, and also Joffrey. Bloody Joffrey. Now the Targaryens and Valerians were both known for their distinctive hair, and with none of the kids carrying this, a lot of rumours started to spread. We had the whole eye slashing incident, and when Alicent demanded punishment, Viserys shut everything down. He pretty much sided with Rhaenyra, and to hammer home his loyalty, he made a treason to say that they were strongs. During this time, Daemon had wed Lane a Valerian, but the pair would end up having their relationship come to a tragic end. The show and book differ in their telling of the events, with the former having her go through the childbirth that completely wiped her out. In the source material, she knew she was dying and wanted to fly Vagar one more time. 
She went to climb the steps of the tower, but sadly, she collapsed when doing so. However, in the show, she begs for death, fully aware that Damon doesn't love her with all his heart. Harwin and Lionel were also killed at this point, when the pair perished at the fire in Harrenhal. Again, the book doesn't spell out whether Laris was behind it or not, and it leans into the curse with it being blamed as the reason for their deaths. Now, this started off a year known as the Red Spring, in which several characters died. The first was Lena, then Harwin, and shortly after this we got Lainor, before ending with Viserys. The show does change things up, with Lainor faking his own death, whereas in the book he was taken out completely by his jealous lover Sakal. Damon and Rhaenyra were married just six months later in the book, and according to some of the sources, she was already pregnant before they wed. The pair left and went to Driftmark, much to the fury of Viserys, who hadn't approved the wedding, however, they reconciled shortly after. In the book, the finger slicing scene happened much later in the timeline, and basically how it was laid out was that there was Vaemon accusing Rhaenyra's kids of being strongs, which then made her dispatch Damon. He killed the lord, and then his cousins and nephews fled to King's Landing. They sat before the king and basically broke down Maury's style about why the kids were strongs. Viserys sat and nodded along and listened to their plea. Then, out of the blue, he announced that they'd be losing their tongues. Nice. They were cut out, and when Viserys stood up, he sliced his finger on the throne. Viserys gained a fever after this, and maesters were powerless to stop this spreading throughout his body. Rhaenyra ended up bringing her own maester in, who advised they remove his fingers, and then the fever subsided, and he regained his health. Now, during this, Rhaenyra had two other children in Aegon and Viserys. Damon was the daddy, and they carried with them the classic Targaryen hair. The book says that Alicent took this as a slight to her own son Aegon, and though Rhaenyra denied this, it definitely was. Now, one thing the show doesn't cover is that Rhaenyra gained weight during her five pregnancies, and the whole stuff with the Strongs also turned her very bitter. She was jealous over Alicent, who'd managed to retain her figure, and though the show paints her out as the good guy, it's not really the case in the book. There's definitely shades of grey there, and she would snipe at Alicent just as much as Alicent had sniped at her. I think the show deliberately did things differently, so we could see some character growth in her, whereas in the book, she's definitely as petty as the rest of her family. Now, though Rhaenyra helped to save her father's life, he died shortly after, and the Dance of the Dragons began. In the show, we see that on his deathbed, he accidentally tells Alicent about the prince who has promised prophecy. Unfortunately, wires get crossed, and Alicent thinks that they're talking about their son. This never happened in the book, and instead, Alicent and Otto just decided to put Aegon on the throne in order to seize power. Here, Alicent believes it's Viserys' last wish, so pick your poison on that one. Oop, poison it. Now, this started off the Dance of the Dragons, and the book beautifully transitions from Aegon's coronation into what she's up to on Dragonstone. Maelys never broke through during it, and instead, cheers rang out from King's Landing. On Dragonstone, though, there were screams of agony, with Rhaenyra's third day of labour taking place. Learning about Aegon being crowned pushed her into labour, and the book describes it as the baby itself burning with a fury, desperate to get out. The process was horrifying for Rhaenyra, with her cursing Aegon and Alison throughout. She also called the baby a monster, and told it to get out. When the child came, it was sadly stillborn and malformed. It's said that it had a scaly short tail similar to a dragon, and Rhaenyra vowed revenge. To her, they'd taken her baby, throne, and father, and they were going to pay for it. The child was named Visenya after one of Aegon's sister wives, and its death brought a major change in Rhaenyra. A funeral was held, and she was crowned with her own coronation. The book says that her first order was to proclaim Alison and Aegon traitors, and she denied the terms that they had offered her. The series had Otto arriving at Dragonstone, but in the book, it's just Grand Maester Orwell. Rhaenyra asked him why he'd betrayed her while Cyrax looked on, and they stripped him of his chains. She handed these to her own maester, and denied the terms which involved her being Lady of Dragonstone. All of her supporters in King's Landing had either switched sides of being killed, and still recovering from the birth, she was at her lowest point. The Greens had the drop on them, and had already sent out several ravens across the entire realm. Rhaenyra did the same thing, and she used her sons to drum up support, with Jocerys going to Winterfell and also the Aerie. Lucerys went to Storm's End, and Aemon made lunch. Now that's basically where season 1 ends, and after learning of Luke's death, Daemon promised her a son for a son. Working with Mysoria, assassins were sent into the castle, and these were called Blood and Cheese. They waited in Alicent's chambers for Helena to bring the children in to say goodnight, and forced her to choose which child would die. She said Maelor, but they killed Jaehaerys instead, and this sent her insane. She had the guilt of knowing that one of her sons was dead, and that the other knew that they'd been chosen to die. 
Elena went insane, and her kids were put in the care of Alicent. Now to get revenge, Egon called an Arak Cargill, and he went to Dragonstone under the guise of being his brother. This was on a mission to kill either Rhaenyra or a royal, but he bumped into his twin on the way up. The pair duked it out, and due to no one being able to tell them apart, they couldn't intervene. They died in each other's arms, very sad, and uh, yeah, it just shows the whole civil war thing and brother versus brother. Now the action made the blacks really step things up, and Daemon took over Harren Hall whilst Rhaenyra commanded things from Dragonstone. They slowly started to recruit as many dragon riders as they could, as there were several on the island that weren't being used. You see, Dragonstone was surrounded by villages, and it was said that the Targaryens from time to time had frequented the pubs, clubs, and Magaluf Strip throughout their reign. They'd sired many bastards, and those showing the features of the Targaryens were called in in order to ride dragons alongside the blacks. This brought forth Hugh Hammer, and also a character called Nettles, who I'll talk more about in just a bit. Now it's during this time that several battles happened. One involved Rhaenys against Aemond, Kristen Cole, and Aegon II. Her dragon Maelys and Aegon's sunfire met in the air before they hurtled towards the ground. When the smoke settled, a blackened body believed to be Rhaenys' was found, and though Aegon was still alive, he was critically wounded. He'd been burned so badly that his armour had melted into his skin, and Aegon was sent back to King's Landing in order to recover. During this time, Aemond wore the crown, and he sat on the Iron Throne. Now the Battle of the Gullet then happened, and Rhaenyra's firstborn son Jaceres was killed during this. Though the blacks won the fight, his dragon flew too low to the sea, and it was struck with artillery from the boats. Jace fell into the sea, and though he scrambled aboard some wreckage, he was shot by crossbows. Now the book says that the death of Lucerus broke Rhaenyra's heart, however it does say that in Jaceres' death, that she grew even more hardened. This made her into a sort of warrior princess, and if you'd seen her, then you'd know she was ready to kill anyone that stood against her. Damon took over Harrenhal during this time, and Aemon believed that he could strike him down there. He and Kristen mounted a charge, and this ended up taking six days to get to the location. However, Damon got word of this early, and it came from those who were still loyal to him in King's Landing. As we saw in episode 1, the City Watch were fiercely loyal to him, and they helped the Blacks to mount an assault on King's Landing. Rhaenyra took it, and she captured Alicent, who handed over the keys and told her that the kingdom was now hers. When going to Egon's chamber though, they found them empty, and the king had fled in order to escape the execution. Rhaenyra almost instantly took to the throne, and she had people swear to her throughout the day and night. However, there were some bad omens that came from this, and these were noticed when she ended up getting off the throne. The maesters and attendants noted that her legs and hands were marked with cuts, which the throne had given her through the night. This was seen as a rejection by it, and she ruled for only six months. The queen was initially welcomed though, and due to her popularity as a child, King's Landing loved her. Aegon was a pretty unpopular king due to the rumours about him and his exploits, but she was seen as someone who would help the realm into a prosperous new period. However, opinions started to change over time, and it just got worse and worse. For those that tried to switch from green to black were seen as hashtag fake friends, because they'd switch from black to green in order to save themselves. Rhaenyra said that false friends are more dangerous than enemies, and she started to routinely have the heads of the houses cut off. That, that's like a sort of head of the house and beheaded joke, but moving on. These heads were put on spikes around King's Landing, and to make matters worse, taxes started to shoot up. Tylan Lannister, aka the Master of Coin, had basically moved a large amount of the kingdom's wealth overseas, and to locations that he could control. This left the blacks pretty poor off, and thus Rhaenyra instructed that the taxes had to be raised. Everyone was made to pay their share in King's Landing, and even beggars were forced to hand over money. Things got so bad that people even started to say there were taxes on the rats. Inquisitors were sent out to round up Aegon's supporters, and the freedom that people once had was stripped away, with them now having to pay more for the privilege. Rhaenyra was nicknamed King Maegor with teats, and this ended up becoming something that people would say for the next hundred years to describe a cruel woman. During this time, Egan's children were captured, and Maelor's head was sent to her as a gift. There's two accounts over what she did, with some saying she cried upon seeing this, whilst others said that she smirked. The head was cremated in Targaryen fashion, but all the death and dismay started proving too much for Rhaenyra. Obviously, the book doesn't have the dagger in it, but I can see this being where it's injected into the show. Rhaenyra was supposed to be bringing the realm together in order to make it ready for the White Walkers. Both Jaehaerys and Viserys ruled with peace prominently on their mind, and knowing what we know, this is because they wanted everyone to be united against a common threat. 
I can see this being the case here too, with Rey thinking that she's basically let her father down due to all the death within the family. A life of betrayal also sadly caused her to become more and more paranoid over time. Several people were accused of being traitors to the realm, and this included Corlys, which made his entire house and fleet abandon her side. Now we've kind of skipped over the character Nettles, but she became a prominent player during this time. It was rumoured that her and Damon were getting it on, with the pair apparently bathing together. Rhaenyra ordered her death, but several people thought this was a step too far, and some even switched sides to Aegon after this. Damon was supposed to return home, but instead he went back to Harrenhal, which is where he had his final battle against Aemond. Helena also ended her life during this, which enraged a lot of those in King's Landing. This was seen as being caused by Rhaenyra, and some even suspected that she'd had Helena murdered. Whether this was true or not, we don't know, but the point is that many believed it, and it showed how unpopular that Rhaenyra was. This was known as the Storming of the Dragon Pit, and during it, Joffrey was killed. He tried to fly Cyrax to defend his mother, but the dragon was pelted with stones, and Joffrey fell off his back and hurtled towards the ground. The mob cut off the limbs from his corpse, stole his clothes and jewels, and they beheaded him, showing how much they hate the strong, so sorry, Targaryens. Now, Aegon the Younger became the heir at this point, and Rhaenyra and her son fled King's Landing. Rhaenyra had to sell the crown in order to buy money to stow away on a ship, which would take her to Dragonstone. However, she was betrayed, and Aegon came back into the story with his dragon Sunfire. As Joffrey said, Rhaenyra was eaten by the dragon whilst her son watched on. Aegon ordered that it was to be stricken from the record that Rhaenyra was ever queen, and all the following chronicles just referred to her as a princess. Really sad end to the story, and this dance of the dragons wiped out many of the remaining ones, and it whittled down the Targaryens. After decades and decades of peace, the Targaryens were almost brought to their knees by themselves, and Rhaenyra stands as a horrifying example of that. Now that's the character's life summed up as best we could, and I hope you enjoyed the video. Obviously, I'd love to hear your thoughts on her, and what you think they might change for the show. We're running a competition right now and giving away three copies of Top Gun Maverick on the 15th of November, and all you have to do to be on the chance of winning is like the video, make sure you subscribe with notifications on, and drop a comment below with your thoughts on the character. We pick the comments at random at the end of the month, and the winners of the last one are on screen right now, so if that's you, then message me on Twitter at Heavy Spoilers. If you want some else to watch, then make sure you check out our breakdown of episode 10, which will be linked on screen right now. We go about all the easter eggs in it, talk about how it ties in with the book, and it's definitely worth checking out if you love the show as much as we do. By the way, thank you for clicking the video. I've been Paul, I'll see you next time. Take care, peace.